I'm going to produce a drawing in this style. So here's a few examples of them. There's one. There's another one. There's another one. Another one. Another one. This one. Another one. So the subject is going to be this chap here. I've got a few different versions of him. It's quite handy to have a colour version and a black and white version actually, so that's quite good. I'll probably use the black and white version. <clears throat> so the purpose of, of this exercise is to look at line work. So I'm going to be using a couple of different sort of implements. First thing I'm going to introduce you to is something called a proportional divider. This is a way of sizing something up um, for very accurately, actually, if you get used to it. It takes a bit of getting used to, but actually it's a very nice uh, implement. I've taken the, uh, the liberty of putting some marks on it. Now, this, is, this helps me when I would use it. So I put, put a dot down here, sort of orange dot or whatever, uh, to tell me this is the smallest end. So this is the end going from small and then you open it up. Now I've set it, I've also made some settings here. So it goes up to from 112% to 446%. Um, and I've worked that one out. Um, right, so when I draw, I'm going to start off with pencil, obviously, just a, just a nice sharp pencil. I'm going to need a ruler uh, to start off with and a rubber. So that's all I need to begin with. So without further ado, I think we'll get on with it. So we have this picture. Now the way to use it, now I worked this out earlier, so you know, but I can change these notches. I can unscrew this, I can move this uh, all the way through here, but I've decided to put this on the second notch. So the first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna make out, I'm gonna draw the size of the box. So you gotta make sure when, you, when you've set your settings, you gotta make sure it's tight so you can transfer it. So I'm gonna take this length, so I'll set this to this length, like that, just always worth a double check. So, so there we go, we have that length, so then I turn it, and that will be my new length. So I'm going to just by eye, oops, I think I wobbled it there, just double check again. Yeah, dude, slightly touched it, but be careful. Make sure that's make sure that's tight. So now I've got my new length there, and I'm gonna mark out a notch there and a notch there. Okay. And then I'm gonna get my new width. Over here, so let's work that one out. So it's set at 126%, which means that it's going to be 26% bigger than this, which is which is a surprising amount actually. <clears throat> right, so that's so it's quite a good size. I'm still leaving a bit of a border on this white paper. So now I've got my marks. So the next thing I need to do, this is I didn't mention is a ruler. So I'm going to measure what that is. So that is 34. So I'll go 34 millimetres. Join those two ends up. Just make a nice long line. Probably better if you, well, I don't think it's long enough. Never mind.
Now, so we go. We've got a box. Congratulations. So next, <clears throat> I'm going to look at the main, some of the main shapes. So, for example, the egg of his face. So, if we make his face into a basic egg shape, but I'm going to look for the dimensions of it. So, this is why. So, keeping the settings the same. So, normally I'll choose a side to work from um, with these. So, or two sides rather. So, just for the. I mean, it doesn't. There's not a hard and fast rule because sometimes using the other sides will be useful as well. But if I work from this side and from this side. That might help to begin with at least. <clears throat> so I'm going to take my measurement from that from this edge of the box. So having a box is quite useful. So let's just look at the edge of his ears, for example. Actually, no, no, I'll, I'll no, I'll, I'm going to go to the edge, edge of his jawline, which is like this line here. So I'll actually go to here. Okay, so I'll try and flip it over. Always remember to flip it over, which is why I've got the the uh, the spot on there. So that is going to be the line where his jaw, the edge of his jaw is going to happen. So it's going to, that line somewhere there. I don't know how high up it is because I haven't take that, taken that measurement yet. So let's find out where the bottom of his chin is, for example. So we can come from the bottom of this area here. So the bottom of his chin is going to be somewhere along there. Now I don't know I don't know the widths or anything like that but I know this is the edge of the jaw. So I'm basically I'm gonna make four measurements along his head. And we'll just just to get going. And obviously you're gonna take lots and lots of measurements. So again this is for the other side of his face. So our measurement there. Like that, and it's going to be, do something approximately like that. We're, we're working fairly approximately, although these lines, in, in where where the, you know, in the place that they they are supposed to be, are right. So that's given me a good a good grounding. Let's have a look at the at the distance to the top of the hat. So again, turning this round. So the top of his hat is going to be somewhere around there. So um, let's see. And I can keep on making measurements. So let's look at the side of his head here. Now I can see his hairline. I'm just trying to sort of simplify a little bit to begin with. Like that. So actually, so what I can see is that this is going to come around somewhere like that. Um, okay. So then I can start to, well, seeing as I've got this, I can actually start to sketch between this edge. I'm gonna, actually, I'm gonna find out where that starts. That would be a good idea. So I'm going to find out where, it's, where, the, where the finger is in there, so that beginning of that chin line. So it's that far over, like that. So that's, okay, that's pretty much what I guessed it was. So here we go. So I can start my little drawing part, my little sketch. And I'm working through here, through here, up to about there. A little bit of a lump there, which I can sort out later. Like that. <clears throat> now let's find out where the the brim, the lowest part of the brim of his hat is, which would be that would be quite handy. So it's something like that. So it's somewhere around there. And let's find out on on his head that that position there. So on the on the egg of his head. Now this this is I'm not quite draw. I've simplified that to an extent, but I'm, okay. Let's see how high that goes. 
Sometimes you might need to do this a couple of times because you can wobble and all that sort of thing. So if you're not sure, if it, feel, if it doesn't feel right, measure it again. So we're getting some sh some of the shapes. So I can see that this is going to be the top of the hat. Now, you know, it's starting to, starting to come into place. Can measure anyway the, the the hat so this sort of thing here can be about there okay I'd actually done it too far over that's all right something like that <clears throat> and then I've got to look to there's all sorts of other objects so let's look at um, the beginning of his shoulder. So things on the edge of the page are very easy. So the beginning of his shoulders. Like that. And then we're going to look at the height that it gets to around about there. So I'm going to get, again, some of it is a little bit guesswork, but... Uh, so that angle, we're going to try and match that angle, something like that. Now, um, let's see, so we can look at the, the height of that thumb. I'm not going to bother too much of the, with the hand. It's all the same, it's all the same process. You just find, find some of the points and you, 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 it's like you're making a map. You're mapping your way through. That seems quite high. I'm going to double check that one. Thumbs as well. Okay, something like that. So there's a bit of a an edge to the thumb there. Now, so we know that the uh, we know that the, the other part of the hand's coming in like that. I can look at the measurement over here. I'm going to ignore this hand after this though, because I'm going to concentrate on the face. Because it's just piecing things together really. So that's the edge, that's this edge here that I've just found. And we've no, we know this comes in somewhere around there. And then the thumb's somewhere around there. We could find that piece of the hand that's over here. lots to do on there. Now, um, let's look at his face because that's that's the bit that I'm interested in really. That's the bit you're probably interested in as well. So if we look at the the bottom of the nose, let's I quite often start there. Let's have a look at that. So the line like that. Now actually it might be an idea as well to, to if, it, if, if it'll help you, this is something that's worth thinking about. The center of his face. So the center of his face, how, I mean, his face is slightly turned away from you. So how can you tell where the center of his face is? Well, I would look <clears throat> at these two points. So the point directly between the two eyes, like that. So the halfway point there. And actually the halfway point between the edge of the lip. I mean, he's actually got a bit of a scar or something there, so it's a bit tricky. But I would say the edge of the lip, let's call it there. So if we, so we're going to make two points just to get a rough center line. So I'm going to say round about there. Like that. And then round about. round about there and if you wanted to use a ruler you can that's okay which I will like that so obviously this line's going to go we'll get rid of it later so we've got this the edge of the nose there so we know this is coming in and doing something something like that Let's look for the the mouth line. So it's finding these points and then sketching between them. So 
or something like that and we can make a little bit of a shape now we can find the widths as well but I'm just going to get the general shape of this mouth obviously it's got a lip and all sorts of things like that let's find um, see it's actually got it actually continues that's probably the edge of his mouth but there's like a wrinkle there um, hmm. well I'm going to go to that point there so you can you don't have to measure directly from the from the edge of the line at this, at this point but you know when you get to so when you've got things to compare it to you can actually you can actually just compare one to one thing to another but just for now we'll just go to the edge of the box the edge of the box is kind of it's quite handy so I'll turn that round so that's that point that was a good guess so that's that point there and then you've got this little sort of baggy bit there um, so let's look at where the, the pipe comes into the other side of his mouth somewhere around here so you've got the pipe it's going to be sort of beginning I would say some, something like that so you see how this just pieces together um, we can look at the nose width now so let's look at the this side of the nose which is somewhere around there so that's the outer extent of it like that we'll have a little guess as I say once you can see, once you've got a decent idea there, you can sort of, you can just draw it. Uh, and then if, if you're not sure, if you're still not sure, just check it again. So then we've got this one, this side. So I reckon it's something like that it'll come through something like that I mean you could check on how high that comes up that does seem quite a an oblique an angle it was a bit of a guess that I did but we'll see and a pretty good guess as well now I haven't touched the eyes yet so let's look at those now the eyes are usually a fifth of the way along the width of the, the egg but that's if it's from the front so this is going to be, this is a bit different because his eyes are pushing towards the left of his, of his head. So it's a little bit different um, in terms of the angle. So we'll, we'll need to, let's see, I'm going to take four measurements per eye just to be absolutely sure of what's going on. So let's go to the first one. So I'm going to go each width and each height way of being as accurately accurate as you can it's important stuff so I'm gonna have a bit of a guess to where that eye is going to be roughly there and look at the other side so the, just the outer extent the full the, the very edge of the eye something like that so we're going to look at the top and the bottom. Okay, I put them way too far over. So there's the bottom part. Okay, so then you can just make those shapes like that. So you have one shape, something like that. And then we'll carry on. Same again. And there. One there, and a top and a bottom. 
bear in mind his head might be cocked to one side and things like that so this will help you to get that little bit of nuance that's a good word isn't it a little bit of um, subtle difference There we go, I'm just put in roughly, again you can take more measurements if you want to, if you need to, but it just gives you something to sketch in, sketch in. so we can start to put in um, an indication of where this eye is. Another one here. So then once you've got, you're starting to get the features in, so it can, you, know, you can you can just place these things in. You you you're ready to go. You don't you can just draw them. And again, if in doubt, check it with the with the proportional divider, and you can just get going. And it should make a lot more sense now. And you can be sure you can be reasonably sure that you're that you're more or less in the correct place for things. So you can see it's starting to take some sort of a shape. Um, there's the shoulder, there's the there's the broom to do, there's all sorts of things to do. Let's look, let's have a quick look at the ears. Let's just see how far the ears come down. Something like that, and then the height of the ears. That seems very high. I'm going to check that again. I'll always check in case it moved. Maybe I moved it. Did. So something like that. Now we look at the the extent on this side. Bear in mind, if a face is directly towards you, the most average faces, the top of the ears are level with the brow. The bottom of the ears level with the nose. But his his head is dipped towards you, dipped down. So that's going to change the relative position of the ears quite a lot. And um, so yeah, I need this outer edge here hmm, that seems a long way over just double check if in doubt double check yeah, that's about right so it's coming in This ear is coming through like that, so there's a bit of an angle. Like that. This angle actually comes through more like that. And there's lots to do, but that's giving you the gist of how to put this thing together. Like that. So, that's too far over. Lots to do, and I'll come back to this next time. So I've now finished my drawing. Here's the original. Here's my drawing. Now you'll notice that I've uh, indicated in pencil. This is, isn't. If I was doing an actual pencil drawing, this isn't something I would probably do. But I've indicated where my darks are, and that helps me. Because, because the way I'm going to do this next, so I'm going to use um, a, a brush pen. That's going to be my next stage. So I'm going to go with a brush pen and I'm going to indicate in a lot of these darks. And I'm also going to feather some edges. So in other words, some edges with, uh, they're going to be, go from dark to sort of medium or light. 
they're going to be blends. So I'm going to do something called feathering, um, and you'll see what I'm what I'm talking about. But first of all, so it's, it's kind of going to be back to front in the usual way you might do a drawing. Most drawings are light to dark, but in this case, I'm going to do it dark to light. So here's my drawing. Um, I've done it quite heavy, so maybe a bit heavier than I usually would, so you can see it. Another little point, <clears throat> just compositionally, I wanted a little bit more of his hand and his shoulder to come down, just a smidge. So I've just drawn in a little bit of an extra block of that. So I'm going to make up that little bit. Just It just adds a little bit of visual air, visual space, just to make it look a little bit more pleasant. So I hope that's the first part of that. I hope you understood what I'm talking about. So the, the materials I'm going to use for the next part are going to be a brush pen and various um, uh, fine liners, things like that. Various grey ones and there's a, there's a further grey as well. There's a, like a three quarter grey like that. Okay, thank you very much. I'm going to start the process of putting in some darks on this piece of work using the brush pen. Now notice that I'm going to keep my, keep a piece of paper across my the heel of my hand. If you're going to smudge anything, that's how you're going to do it. So. Okay, onto this. So I'm going to start with uh, the nose. I'm just put a, I'm just putting a few marks on like that, just fairly light. And the thing is, is that they're quick marks, so they've got a sort of uh, a, a shallow tail. So the the idea is that you go light, dark, light. That's the idea with those marks. Obviously, that's a, an exaggerated one. I'm putting in a few of these marks, especially the sort of thicker ones. Anything that has a little bit of bulk to it. And if it's done just a little bit on the on the quick side, that's quite helpful. This will take some time. I'm not going to show you all of it. I'm going to show you edited highlights of it because otherwise this will be quite a quite a long period of time. So I'll just show you the principles of it. Now I'm just going to talk about feathering. So we've got a little piece around here. So I'm just going to um, I'm going to block in a base of it. So I think the base goes here, and then the top of it. Going to have these little sort of V shapes in there, like that. Maybe just maybe do a second one, just block in there. So it's got these. So these are, these little edges are going to help me to blend in with a fine liner. So we're just creating any little in between tones. Something like that. And you've really got to think about this, you know, so anything that's towards the light end, then you don't do. You're just looking for the for the main darks and you can get quite a lot of it done this way. Now I've got a bit of an edge here on this on this at the bottom of his nose. So let's have a little look at that. So very sort of light. With that, so very little, tiny little strokes. To put a few in at the bottom. Let's have a look at some areas. So already, there's a little bit of character, a little bit of something happening there. Um, let's have a little look at his eye over here. So again, I'm, you know, less is more with this. 
unless you've got some very contrasty darks and transitions from dark to light or dark to medium. So we'll have a look over here. We'll put in a few of these. We'll put a baseline and a bit of a bit of a feather. So a baseline again, maybe a bit of a feather there. Just looking at blocking these in. So obviously anything that's just a block is just a block. So that, so I think there's one coming up here. So I'm going to block this in. Something like that. That's more or less just a block, which is pretty easy. And then a little bit of a shape over here. The eyelid. This is where you've really got to look. Really got to look what's happening. Obviously, if you make a big mistake, then with it being ink, you might think that you're you're sort of done. You know, if it's, if you make a big mistake, there, you can you can use white gouache to correct to a certain extent, but it's best to not make the mistake in the first place. Which is why you have some good penciling if you can get it. So again, all these little wrinkles. There's a bit of an edge over here. It's really still keep on looking at your picture. Now go for the inside of the eye. Um, just a little edge. Something like that. And so you've got the pupil. So these edges are slightly sketchy, they're slightly, they want thin, thick, thin, is what you want. <clears throat> but, but basically having a, a little tail, and that's just, it's, it's a very, very attractive thing to do, if you can get it. And that's, if you do it too slowly, you won't get the tail. So it's just removing the brush as you go. Lightening the pressure on it. We're starting to get even. You know, it's it's understated at the moment. I've still got all my other tints to go in. There's there's tons to go in. Let's see. Let's have a little bit of a shape over here. Like that. But there's, if they're so full of character, these marks, and you may think that you're gonna. You know, you're gonna. With the with the fine liners, you're going to tidy tidy things up that need tidying up. But actually, to maintain to 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 leave an essence of this character that you're doing now is ideal. Now with these pens sometimes you get a little bit of a clogging and you might want to just remove the end of it. So this is where you have your little shape here. You can just remove some of this or a tissue would do. But actually having having another piece of paper just to shape your... It's the same with brushes actually. Same with, same with working with watercolour. You can do the same thing. So we've... Uh, <clears throat> Feathered quite a bit around here, feathered some darks around here, filled in a, a solid dark around here. So this is what I mean by feathering, it's these little diamond, little sharp edges, thick, thick, thin, thick. Um, so you're going edge, 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 and it's, so you're against a dark block and you're edging that through like that. So we'll come through. Uh, I'm, going to, I'm going to complete this and I'm going to show you what I'm going to do um, with that as a completed part of it. And then we're going to move on to the fine liners. So 